I once did a video tackling this subject long ago on Chopper Pilot 5, yeah, back in those days, and I'm happy to see that my opinion has stayed roughly the same. But like all people, I've since grown and evolved. It's always fascinated me that some Godzilla films I grew up with were different from the Japanese versions. When classic media started releasing those double bills, I was ecstatic. I was just getting into reading subtitles and learning how to compensate both reading and also enjoying the images, which I can say I can do quite well today, not to blow my own trumpet. Since the release of these DVDs that I still highly recommend to anyone who doesn't have them yet, it has become commonplace for Godzilla fans to denounce the US dubs. Not just the alternative cuts, but dubs in general, in praise of the original versions, especially the films made particularly by Ishiro Honda. They denounced the US cuts as bastardized versions of the movie that is an insult to Ishiro Honda's vision. I scoff this idea. And though I usually prefer the Japanese versions, to be quite honest, the idea of losing the US cuts that made most of us fans in the first place honestly terrifies me. I thank God for people like Red Menace Online, uh, who has been doing fan restorations of several US versions of Showa Godzilla films, even Godzilla 1985. As an editor, I love watching different versions of a film. What takes does one cut use over another? How does it cut together? I have this especially with Dawn of the Dead made in 1978. Sometimes you find something interesting in the US cuts that directly benefits the film. It's, bla it's blasphemy. But I actually prefer the US edits and structure of Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, not as a whole, I mean just in terms of structure, to the point I'm actually making a fan edit of this using the original audio so we hear the actual uh, actors' voices, as well as some of the music from the Japanese versions, and copying the structure from the Continental Cut. The Continental Cut is just tighter than the Japanese version, fixing some genuine continuity mistakes, like uh, scenes being rearranged. For example, Ghidra's birth, that's a great example of a rearranged scene, and even adds more tension by replacing a couple of Ifukube's repetitive score with drums and drones. For example, I think of the sequence with Malness shooting the assassin in Shindo towards the climax of the film. In the Japanese version, there's nothing there, while in the American version, they added in sound effects of Godzilla's roar and Rodan fighting, and some actual music. I think that directly benefits the, the film. Not to say that if, if a Kube score is bad, it's actually one of my favorite scores that he's ever done. Mothra vs. Godzilla has the US bombardment sequence not available in the Japanese cut with the Frontier missiles, for obvious reasons, by the way. It made Godzilla a much more formidable foe, and his actions a lot more poignant and frightening as a result. I find Raymond Burr in Godzilla King of the Monsters to do not just an admirable job, but a fantastic one. I also praise Terry Morse for taking an extremely Japanese film and making it compatible with US audiences for the time period, the 1950s. I also find Burr's monologues compelling and extremely dramatic, another perspective of Godzilla's attack on Tokyo. I prefer several edits in Godzilla 1985, including the replacing of some music uh, in, in the film with, the, with stock music from DEF CON 4 by Christopher Young. The music in the Japanese versions during these sequences where the music was replaced, I found too optimistic. An example of this is the JSDF being scrambled in, onto the shore when Godzilla is approaching. The music adds to the montage much better and is even intercut with the actions on Mount Mihara. While in the Japanese version, it just goes from one scene of them setting up a Mount Mihara to the JSDF scrambling, something I find quite common in Japanese editing. They don't like to intercut things. Godzilla's attack is also much stronger in the US cut, shortening it from the snail pace in the Japanese version. Godzilla 2000, I generally prefer the United States cut to the Japanese version. It removed nine minutes of useless footage, tightening the pace, making it easier to follow. My favorite example of this being uh, the sequence where the UFO was rising for the first time. It cuts to the, one of the characters looking at the UFO, then looking at the sun, cut to a shot of the sun. In a Japanese version, that's not there. We're left to interpret that. The sun is the final shot of the sequence. I also like the edit where, in both versions, 
They are wondering what Godzilla is thinking right now as he lands to fight Orga. In the Japanese cut, it goes to a wide shot, then to a close-up. In the American cut, it goes to a close-up, so we're immediately like, this is what he's thinking, to a wide. It's just a better cut. The music is also better in Godzilla 2000. I never cared much for the Japanese score as a whole. The attack scenes in particular between Godzilla and the JSDF is far too slow and undramatic in the Japanese version. The US cut has a much more dramatic and military-esque score underlying the sequence. And they do the same for Godzilla vs. Orga. The music in the American version is just far superior. To less a non-Godzilla film where this happens, Rodan, made in 1956. I much prefer the silence in the Japanese cut instead of that useless monologue that happens throughout the entire thing. But the edits of Rodan's big attack is far superior in the American cut than the Japanese cut. It establishes a mate right off the back, making the parallels between the Rodans and our main human protagonists far more prevalent. It also removes Ifukube's score, which his score is amazing. But however, what this version does better is one, it, it quickens the cuts, immediately makes it a more intense action sequence, and replaces it with a much louder and more dynamic soundtrack, not a score, a soundtrack. The tanks firing, for example, it's actually my favorite, one of my favorite sound effects ever. The tanks firing is, much, is a much better effect in the US cut, and we hear people screaming in the buildings and such. My favorite example, the man screaming as he grabs the tree and is blown away, that's silent in the Japanese cut, while well, in the American cut we blatantly hear someone screaming in pure terror. I want to see these versions get a justified restoration, just as the Japanese cuts have, especially now that Criterion Collection is, is releasing most of the Showa era films. I believe they deserve as much. Yes, they are dubbed. I personally think the ones I listed here have an excellent dub. Yes, I said it. There are several cases where I find the dub to be better than the original audio. Cowboy Bebop, I think the English dub is superior to the original Japanese audio. The same as Spirited Way. I can't even watch the, the Japanese dialogue, the original dialogue anymore, because I just find the dub to be so good. And to be clear, Toho always dubbed their versions of the films with a Hong Kong company. I forgot the name of it off the top of my hand. And let's just say they matched the cuts and edits of the Japanese versions, but that's all I can really say good about them. What a beautiful house it is. The US distributors, UPA and AIP usually, of course there were others, but usually it was those two, would personally go in and care enough about the product to cut a few frames here and there, inserting a new reaction shot here to better match the lips with a genuine voice actor, not just somebody who happens to speak English. Say nothing about Paul Fries. Yes, yes, Kong's mine now. On a side note, I've already, I know I did a, a, a review of King Kong Escapes, but the US version of King Kong Escapes is far better than the sluggish Japanese version, including the voice acting. Doctor Who, look, as much as I love Eisei Yamamoto and trying to think that Doctor Who is connected with all of these characters where he pops up throughout the Showa film, his performance is only enhanced by Paul Frees' voice work. Mothra vs. Godzilla, Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, Son of Godzilla, I think all of these Godzilla films have excellent dubs. Just to specify, I'm talking about the Titra-Titan dubs, to be specific. Invasion of the Astro Monsters, headed by UPA, uh, by Henry Saperstein, God bless that cigar-smoking, insane man, is just amazing and full of, dare I say, more life than even the Japanese actors in the original version. Ah! Look out the window! Come on, let's get out of here. That's awesome. It's just so full of life. And what would we do without them? Because, let's face it, we became Godzilla fans as children. I decry anyone who thinks we as kids could have appreciated these films if they were subtitled and we had to read them. I certainly would have lost patience. The original Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, I almost hate putting on the original language because of how enjoyable and perfectly fitting the Cinema Share's dub of the film is, which of course is actually the international dub. It adds to my enjoyment of that fun romp in a way that's hard to explain, 
But my favorite example is the alien controller's sexy and smooth dub voice. It's just so deliciously evil. Mechagodzilla. It's the dubs and the US versions that made us who we are. Devoted lovers of men in rubber lizard suits. I can't believe I just said that. But the day will come when I decide to adopt a kid or something. And I know I'll, I'll show him the US versions first and sit him down with me and, and I'll sit down with him and, and we'll enjoy these cuts and, and movies just as much as the Japanese versions. It's why they are so important not only to have but to cherish as Godzilla fans. We shouldn't let the US cuts, the dubs of these films just slip away into oblivion. Because if we do, let's face it, so will Godzilla. I mean, the most famous of his films are, are the films that children and adults can enjoy together. And that's what's so brilliant about them, especially films like Ghidra, the Three-Headed Monster, Mothra vs. Godzilla. Those two movies are utter masterpieces. I, I, and where would we be without the US cuts? We wouldn't be devoted fans. In an entire we would be denying an entire generation of future fans, especially with the MonsterVerse being a thing and, and the anime uh, Godzilla films coming out to Netflix and, and Shin Godzilla, all of these things. It's, it's a great time to be a giant monster fan. Let's not deny future generations the chance to enjoy these movies just as much as we did. And I seriously say to all of my listeners out there to go out there and the next time you watch specifically a Showa era G film watch the US cut don't watch the Japanese version watch the US cut now I'm not saying don't watch the Japanese cuts at all of course I'm not gonna say that just watch the US cut for the first time in a long time you might just find it better than you last thought Go on Facebook, like AN Productions. All the links are in the description below. Join Geeks for Geeks if you want to have a fun romp of a time. Bunch of idiots. And in the end, this is Adam Noyce of AN Productions saying, Sayonara. Sayonara.